this plant right here. Oops, the wind. A little bit of breeze, look what it's doing. That's the plant I'm here for, St. John's Wort. It grows on this meadow. It's a fairly sizable meadow. And in order to find St. John's Wort, you have to do some legwork, but it's fine. I mean, this is the one I showed you just now. Here's another one. And another one. And another one. And so on. Not all over the place, you gotta look for it, but it can be done. Another one is small one. Basically you just look for yellow flowers, although it's not the only plant that blooms yellow. I mean right beside here is another yellow flower. This is hog's beard. Kind of resembles a dandelion, both in flowers and in leaves. The leaves are down here. The leaves look like dandelion leaves as well, and they're edible. And as far as I understand, they're routinely added to salads in Italy and Greece, but don't quote me on that. That's what I heard. However, they're a bit bitter. So, considering the time of year when they grow, there's much better wilderness forms of sustenance available, so I don't harvest these. But it's good to know. However, I digress. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here for St. John's Wort. thing I noticed, St. John's Wort is really loved by bumblebees. They're strongly attracted to it, but butterflies give it complete pass. I see butterflies flying by and they go to other flowers. They completely give the St. John's Wort a pass. No idea why, that's just what I observed. That's all. St. John's Wort has these richly yellow flowers and being a chlorophyll producing plant, it's green otherwise. But the green it has is more of a yellowish green, it's pale, not really richly green. And part of its Latin name is perforatum and I'll show you what that's derived from. I just picked this leaf. And I'm gonna show it to you against the sun. This is a good test to determine whether you're really looking at St. John's Wort. The leaves against the sun or a source of light appear as if they were perforated, as if you took a needle and punctured it multiple times. Let me show you again on a different leaf. The stem of St. John's Wort is extremely woody. You wouldn't be able to tear it with your fingers. Just pick it up like most herbs. You need to use a dagger, a knife or a pair of scissors. And even with a knife, you have to saw through it really hard to cut through. It's like a branch of a tree. What I do is I chop. I literally deliver a chop, swift, to cut through it, like, like so. This way I'm able to detach the plant. Oh, look at this bumblebee landing on my finger. Wish my camera would focus. Let me try to chop again on this plant. I have to hold the camera with my left hand so I can use my dominant right hand to chop. I'll try from this angle. Okay, this one went in one chop. You know, in Central Europe, aside from birthdays, we also celebrate what I would call name days. I mean, that's how I would translate it. 
name days. The point there is that each day of the year belongs to a different name. For example, February 14th, which is a famous one, that's a Valentine's Day. And that means that everyone whose name is Valentine celebrates their name day on that day. Each common name has a day on which people of that name celebrate their name day. And just like the Valentine's Day has a thing connected to it that is the day of lovers, many other names have a traditional saying connected to them as well. For example, in my neck of the woods it is said that Martin, whose name day is on November 11th, arrives on a white horse. And the reason being is that on that day, even if it hasn't snowed before, it usually does snow and the countryside gets blanketed with white snow. So Martin arrives on a white horse. So now John. John's name day is on June 24th. And the old saying has it that it's the last day of the year when you can hear a cuckoo make a call. It is also on this day when St. John's word begins to bloom and that is apparently why people gave the herb its name. St. John's word. The herb that blooms on John's name day essentially. And those of you who watched my previous videos know that word is an old English word meaning herb. So St. John's word is a, an herb that blooms on John's name day. Yep. Obviously this year the herbs bloom has been delayed by a few weeks, probably because the winter has been unreasonably cold and lasted longer than normal. And the end of winter then merged into a severe drought which lasts until now. We've basically been for three months without any rain. The plant life here, it all struggles immensely this year. I'm actually surprised all these plants even grow as it's basically Sahara desert around here at the moment. All these plants have been scorched for months and had nothing whatsoever to drink the whole time. And I guess that's great if you want to spend your time by a lake, but I mean, if there's any water left in the lake. But tough luck if you're a plant. Still somehow these plants do manage to grow. But look, I'm, I'll take you here a little bit. Look at these guys, for example. That's knit bone here too. Knit bone. Basically dead, dried, and it's only grown like up to my knees maybe. Last year I harvested because I harvest the root of this plant. It's great for your joints and bones and injuries of that sort. Last year these plants grew up to my chest. This year barely up to my knees. And I mean. This lady's bed straw, by the way, also a medicinal herb, but not the topic of this discussion, so I'm not gonna talk much about it. But also grows yellow, I mean, also blooms yellow at the same time as St. John's Word, but easy to distinguish. But I mean, also St. John's Word, well, I mean, it is dwarfish, it's small, should be much bigger. This drought is definitely giving the plants a hard time. Never mind the fact that even St. John's Word is basically one degree away from drying. But still somehow managed to bloom this year, so I'm happy about that. But I guess St. John's Word has a little bit of an advantage because it does like dry places. It doesn't like to grow in soggy soil. It prefers dry locations. But desert-like conditions are a bit too extreme even for this one, I think. So here this meadow. Obviously there's a vast array of different plants. The question is how to distinguish the St. John's word among them. The obvious starting point are the yellow flowers. I'm gonna have to put my hand behind it. But as we've seen, there are other yellow plants on the meadow too, besides St. John's Wort, like the bed straw, which I just show you, showed you before. There's also goat's beard, but I don't have one right beside me at the moment. There was that hawk's beard, which I showed you earlier. But when it comes to St. John's Wort, the flowers look hella different. St. John's Wort has this cluster of upright hair-like stamens. Stamens 
are the male reproductive organs of the plant. These are the things that produce pollen and you see how many there are sticking upright. The flowers have five petals. You can see from this standpoint. These petals are asymmetric and like the leaves which contain the tiny dots which I showed you against the sun, if I do a close-up view you can uh, notice along the margin there are these they're actually reddish dots, fairly contrasting. If I understand it correctly, within these dots there's this reddish pigment. Obviously the predominant color of the flower is yellow, so when you make a tea from St. John's Word, you more or less expect it to turn golden yellow, but unless you make a very weak tea, it will actually turn almost bloody red. Same with a tincture or an oil, which is what I often make from St. John's Word for various skin conditions. If you put enough flowers in them, they turn this real rich reddish color. And the reason being, if I understand it correctly, is that this pigment from these red dots gets released. And that's why the tea turns so dark. The leaves of St. John's Word are three times as long as they are wide. They're perforated, as I showed you earlier. And they grow opposite each other, as you can see here. And each next pair is then at a 90 degree angle. So basically, these go this way, next pair goes this way. And I mean this way, this way. This way, this way. This way, this way. So each next pair grows at a 90 degree angle from the previous one. So if you were to look at a plant from above, you would see a cross. The stem, like I said, is very woody toward the bottom and branches out as you go up. And as it branches out, these flowers form on the top. That's why you see this cluster of flowers. What you want to harvest is the aerial parts. Some people only harvest the flowers, but I follow the traditional method from old herbal books, which recommend to harvest the upper 30 centimeters or so of the plant, including the leaves and the stem. As for its medicinal effects, what St. John's Word most noted for are its antidepressant effects. Basically, many forms of any kind of nervous tensions, anxiety, sleeplessness, insomnia, even feelings of fear or generally feeling down, menopausal symptoms too. St. John's Word is great for that and the effects have been proven in clinical trials, so it's all science-backed. The active ingredients apparently increase the level of serotonin, if I understand correctly, and dopamine and uh, noradrenaline, which elevate your mood and just generally make you feel better overall. You can also use it topically, generally it's used for sores and burns and various skin conditions like the eczema and even hemorrhoids. There are apparently some concerns that the intake of St. John's Word increases photosensitivity. But according to the Czech Wikipedia, you'd have to take a dose that's multiple times higher than standard. Still, you may want to be careful and not take St. John's Word if you plan to spend some time in the sun after drinking that tea or after taking it in any form. And I think that the more fair-skinned you are, the more you'd have to eat that. And per usual, if you take any pharmaceutical drugs, you may want to consult with a doctor or another medical professional before taking St. John's Word. It happens from time to time that natural medicines interact with pharmaceutical drugs, with chemical agents. So just make sure it's safe for you to take before you take it. I myself don't take any pharma drugs. Of course I don't. And St. John's Word is a staple herb that I take on an ongoing basis and I've never encountered any issues. But that's me and I guess for everyone else the right course of action would be to listen to the mainstream and do what they tell you, not what I tell you or any natural herbalist tells you. Trust the experts, you know the drill.